Philby? Afternoon, Pastor Bob, too. Is your master with him? I regret to say he is not, Mr. Philby. Aha, uh -huh. then I have caught him. Caught him? Where? Out. Who'd have thought it? From Julius Billy's Falk. But here he is now, Mr. Philby. You're late. Well, I, for once, am precisely on time. I? Late? Yes, our appointment is for what, two o'clock, and I believe I heard Big Ben strike the hour at the very moment I turned your bell. Then Big Ben is wrong. It's the only possible explanation. Would you care to wager? Philby, there's nothing I love more than an honest wager, but to take your money under these circumstances wouldn't be a gamble, but a crime. It's a sure thing. That Big Ben is wrong. Big Ben is never wrong. And I'm never late. Would you care for some coffee? Passport two? To impugn the integrity of Big Ben is to guess a version of British technology. And what of my integrity? Personally, I wouldn't trust any man who carries three watches when one will do. I carry three watches because one may be an heir. The second would only show that one is in error and not which is right. So the third keeps the other two honest. And the virtue of the English is not always being correct, but admitting when we are not and setting things to right. Good thing you didn't wager, eh, Philby? Frankly, Billy, before I had the mixed pleasure of meeting you, I never paid that much notice to the time. I managed perfectly well, knowing supper time by my stomach and bedtime by the way to my eyelids. You see, Philby, a man who knows the time is a master. And the immutable fact about time is that there's never enough of it. Time is our most precious possession, for those of us who can possess it. Time gives value to everything else. What good is money if you haven't any time to spend it? Love has no meaning if you have no time to express it. No matter how rich you may think you are, Philby, when you run out of time, you have nothing. Well, here's a fellow who thinks he's rich. Did you see the times? Made up with 55,000 pounds from the Bank of England. Apparently, the police have no clues either. Only a description from the teller. Pass the two. This coffee is cold. You know my coffee is always to be kept at precisely 87 degrees centigrade? Yes, monsieur. Whereas this could not be more than 85 degrees at most. Do you see? Yes, monsieur. Sorry, monsieur. Please take it away. But, but, do you also carry three thermometers as well, Falk? No clues, did you say? None. Except that the thief appeared to be a gentleman. Well, that's a contradiction in terms. At any rate, I'm sure he's a clever fellow. Clever or not, he won't get far. There's a reward offered and detectives are posted at every railway station. Certainly, someone as audacious as he would not find that an obstacle. Dash it all, Fogg. If I don't actually believe you admire Rogue or envy him. Nonsense. Why not? I imagine even someone as stuffy as yourself, see, stuffy as yourself secretly craves excitement and adventure. Excitement is a weakness in character. And adventure is just a defect in proper planning. I take back what I said. No one could accuse you of craving anything. So you think you'll get away, eh? Who knows, the world is a large place. It once was, yes. Once? Do you mean to suggest it's grown smaller? In size, no, but in time, most definitely. And just how small would you guess the world to be? Eighty days, and I never guess. Eighty days? Precisely. I have of late made a study of the world's timetables, steamship and railways. I find it quite fascinating reading. You would. A man can travel around the world in 80 days. Ridiculous. I can prove it to you. On paper, perhaps, theoretically. 
But ships and trains do not travel on theory alone. Nevertheless, it can be done. Would you care to bet? Certainly. How much? 20,000 pounds. 20,000? I wouldn't take your money away, Phil. I should be a bigger thief than this bloke, even if I thought you weren't joking. A true Englishman does not joke about such a serious thing as a wager. Anyway, it's entirely speculation. There's no way to settle the matter. Unless, unless someone were to do it. Yes, but who? Ah, so, is it a bet? See here, Fogg. What about delays, bad weather, native uprisings? What about the unexpected? No such thing. You're insane. On the contrary, I'm a totally rational man looking to double my bank account. So, shall we shake hands on it? 20,000 pounds. When do you leave? Well, I have nothing on for this evening, and there's a train from Victoria at 4.23 p.m., so. Then I shall leave you to your preparations. 80 days hence this very room. Good luck, Phyllis. Good luck doesn't enter into it, Philby. Passport to Carlton. We must pack. We are leaving for a trip around the world. Yes, monsieur. Around which world? Why, this world, of course. I'm in no hurry to tour the next world. Hm. Around the world? Just like that? Yes, monsieur. I will pack. Is there anything else? Would monsieur like his temperature taken? No, I'm quite all right, thank you. In fact, I've never felt better. That's good. I do so hate packing. It's such a chore. We shall purchase whatever else we need. Is there anything special you wish to bring? Then you are ready. Let us be off. Phileas! Amanda, good afternoon to you. Now is that any way to greet your intended? Yes, I believe so. Really, Amanda, what will the servants think? Precisely what I wish them to think, which is that we are in love. We are in love, aren't we, Phileas? As you say, my dear. Then why won't you set the date, you who are so concerned about the time? It is because I'm so concerned I want the time to be right. But we've been engaged six years. Ma is starting to notice. Surely in six years there's been an opportune time. Amanda? Aren't you happy being engaged to me? Of course, Phileas, deliriously. Then why wouldn't you want your happiness prolonged? Oh, don't bother putting them down, Agnes. We won't be long. Shopping? No, no, just impulse buying. When I shop, they usually deliver by horse and wagon. I came by to invite you to tea at four. Will your mother be there? Of course. Uh, then I regret that I cannot have tea at four, but I'll be delighted to when I return. When you return? And when, pray tell, might that be? Exactly 79 days, 23 hours, and 51 minutes. 79 days? 23 hours and 50 minutes. Then I shouldn't keep the kettle on. Not on my account. Eggs, put those crosses down. Something else is beginning to boil. Phileas, dear, dear Phileas, and where, if it isn't too forward of me to ask, are you going? Going? Why to London? I see. Well, be sure to pack your woolens. I understand London is dreadfully chilly in December. Phileas, this is London. We are in London. Precisely. Then it seems to me you might say Passepartout some inconvenience in packing. Amanda, I've always been one with the Eastern philosophers who maintain that the virtue of travel is found not in where one is going, but how one gets there. And do be so kind as to explain to a simple-minded woman, Phileas, what is the virtuous way of traveling from London to London? Why, around the world. Around the world? In 80 days. Come, Passport 2. We have a train to catch. Agnes, pick up those parcels. We have a man to catch.
I brought us something to eat. It will be a rather long Good journey. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. So Thank I want you to be off to. Well, Where shall we go next, this is Mother? My cousin. Oh, I'm not quite sure. Oh dear, the mom. Yes, well, I don't India know has positively magnificent sunsets this time of year. Really? Well, we can do to help her. My dear, my niece wants to go. Oh really? I can't help. The mom is in Dr. Rivers. Oh really? You could even catch them off the odd. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yes, it would. Excuse me, but has the train to Youngstown left yet? I do not know. You might have to dig with might. Right. I'll write this all down. Sister dear, we must be. Oh yes. Come along, Porter. There you go. We must be off. We don't want to miss our train. Yes. Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry. Here now, let's move along. Are you speaking to me? Oh, it talks, does it? Yes, I'm speaking to you, and I'm telling you to move along. Do you know who I am? It's not who you are, but what you are, you see. And by these highly suspicious looks I've seen you giving these honest people, it wouldn't surprise me if you were a pickpocket, a sticky finger, a cut purse of the lot. So if you don't move along, I'll have to run you in. On what job? Vagrancy will do for a start. But then again, you might be that fellow what robbed the Bank of England, and I might earn myself a fat reward. Me best would like that for sure. And if I were he, what would I be doing standing here, waiting to be picked up by a that bully police officer. Exactly my point. Throw me off guard. So, to avoid being thought a crook, I pretend to be a criminal? Highly ingenious. Thank you. You ignorant imbecile. And now, God, I am Inspector Fisk of Scotland Yard. And I could have your job. Y yeah, yes, sir, you could. You could have my job, but begging your pardon, sir, you wouldn't want my job. Not at the moment, anyways. Look here. Bobby, what's your name? Uh, Bobbins, sir. Bob Bobbins. And uh, mayhaps I was a trifle hasty, but I didn't mean no disrespect. Fact of the matter is, today's my first day on the job. And you did appear to, appear to fit the criminal profile we were taught. Stoop shoulders. Shit the eyes. That's great, no. Disrespectful authority. Boys. Stupid looking. <gasps> yes, sir. Allow me to teach you a lesson of my own. How would you describe this man? A fine looking chap. Real gentleman. You don't say. And if you saw this man on the street, you, give him the time of day. Find him a carriage. Tip your hat. Yes, sir. First thing a Bobby's taught is respect. You incompetent idiot! This is the very same man who's robbed the bank of England. What? Him? Oh, oh, bless my soul! In fact, this sketch was drawn by a police artist from a description given by the bank teller, and it's posted in every station, in every precinct, in the city. No wonder he looks so familiar. Oh. Have you had yourself a good look now? I believe I am, sir. You maybe have some limited help. Victoria Station is too large an area for one man to cover. Even if he happens to be Inspector Fix of Scotland Yard. I'm going round to the other side. You remain here. If you see this man, or anyone, even slightly resembling this man, blow your whistle. Dial from running. Yes, sir! Won't my best be excited to hear me tell this?
You do have a whistle. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you do know how to whistle, don't you? Just put your lips together and blow. <sighs> oh, go on, sir. You're pulling my leg, ain't you? Not for a moment. I was. <laughs> Good to see you on your toes. Remembered what? What I forgot. To turn the gas off in my room. The lamp is still burning. Then it shall continue to burn, my profligate friend, as a deduction against your salary. This will be an expensive journey. We have not left London, and already I'm in arrears up to my ears. I will purchase our tickets. Meanwhile, you shall buy some light refreshments for the trip to Dover. Anything I want? A passport to. In the days to come, I'll perforce rely on you and your judgment in matters much more critical than the choice of her past. Yes, monsieur. Thank you, monsieur. Monsieur will like chocolate eclairs, I think. Uh, pardon me, governor. Well, what is it? Uh, mayhaps you oughtn't to go waving such large sums of cash around publicly. It's very tempting to those what of the criminal element, if you catch my drift. Ah, oh, yes. Thank you, officer. I'll be more careful. Good day to you. Ah, good day. What a fine looking chap. A real gentleman he was. Why oh. me? It's him! It's him! Someone help! Call the police! Police! Oh, wait a minute. Huh. I do hope we haven't forgotten anything. I don't see how that's possible, miss, seeing how you brought everything. Still, we've a few minutes. Time enough to buy a little something or other. Please, miss, do me the favor. We may be gone quite a while. Good, give the shopkeepers in London a break. With you gone, I'm sure they're gonna have to declare a holiday. I can hardly wait to see the look on Billy's face when he sees me. That will be a sight. My cousin Lucy's former husband had a heart attack, too. She said he turned out purpley. Anything that will bring a little color to Phyllis's gravestone complexion will be worth it. I'd like to see him angry for once. At least it would be an emotion, and it would serve him right, gallivanting around the globe without a thought for his poor, helpless, self-sacrificing fiancé. Which fiancé is that? Me, you ninny! Ah, good evening, mademoiselle. And you too, Agnes. How thoughtful of you to see us off at the station. I would offer you an eclair, but alas, this is the last. Then how about a goodbye kiss? <sighs> Unfortunately, we will not be gone that long. Ah, the whistle blows. Duty calls. Would that I had but a moment to linger in a fond farewell. I will miss you. You will? For less time than he thinks. Pardon? If you don't hurry, you'll also miss your train. Au revoir. Bon voyage. Arrivederci. Come along, Agnes. I wouldn't want to miss our reunion. Not for the world. Wait, wait, wait. Over there. By the gate. I believe mean, you're right. Ben Fong.
For marriage, I see. Oh, Agnes, you're such a tease. Sometimes I don't know why I keep you in my employ. Anytime you're in need of reminding, just pick up one of these packages of yours. Oh, look! No. I like. How much? You took the words out of my mouth. For a pretty woman, very little. For to she, must do a pretty jewel its work. But this poor gem is not. Not when I've won far from you. Prettier than this? What? Would you like to see it? I'd die to. I'll not ask so high a price as that. Come this way. Ask if he has any used eunuchs for sale. On second thought. Here you are, poor woman. A penny? You English are all the same. Pardon, but I am French. You are not blind. All of you paste. I can see. Eleventh day, right on schedule. The Bombay steamer leaves at four. We mustn't miss it, or we'll be set back an entire day. Then we have time to see the sights, monsieur? The sights? The pyramids, the sphinx. Only rock piles and Rather the worst for wear. The Nile, River of Cleopatra. Only water. Monsieur, where's your sense of romance? A sense I have the sense to do without. Romance invariably interferes with reason, and I've seen it happen far too often. Then can Monsieur have a reason why I may not see the sights? No passport to. Indulge yourself. Meanwhile, I shall buy what few things we require for our journey. Thank you, Monsieur. Just now a moment got the chance. Come, don't. You're no longer in England, in case you fail to notice. So? So? The elusive Mr. Fogg is outside of my jurisdiction. I have to have a warrant to arrest him anywhere else in the empire. I have wired to England for one, but thus far, our quarry has outsped the mails. It's too bad we missed him crossing the English Channel. Huh. We will have had him, if you hadn't have gone seasick. I'm sorry, sir. I've never been to sea. Yes, but why did you grab for me instead of the rail? Oh. I couldn't very well arrest a man after that. The owner of the yard would have been soiled. As well as my Macintosh. You could 
you'd like the cleaning bill for my wages, sir, when we return? Um, I, I wonder, sir, did you mention me in your wire? By now, my best would be getting awfully worried I didn't come home. The telegraph charges by the word, Bobbins. Send me a postal card. Oh, yes, sir. Good idea, sir. She'd enjoy receiving a card from Egypt. She always wanted to travel, but I told her traveling is a foolish luxury when you've only just been married. Oh, it's no good, sir. She killed me. Did you hear him mention the Bombay steamer? Oh, oh yes, that was when my stomach turned. Oh. We must find some way to detain him until the warrant arrives from England. Wherever he's going, he's sure to be outside of the Empire. Mr. Fogg is too shrewd to stay on British soil. But, once he's left it, we've lost him. Do you have any ideas? Bobbins! Uh, <laughs> uh, I could get sick on him this time, sir? You know, it's very unfortunate they can't hand out bombs along with badges. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, look, it's the Frenchie. No, no, quick, on the right. Your palm red? No, I like this color very well. I will tell your fortune. I have no fortune. All I have are two shillings. I, I can tell you, you are a stranger. Yes, it's true. Not only that, but you are from somewhere else. Sacre bleu! France. This is amazing. You are on a journey. A long journey. A very long journey. What else can you tell me? You owe me two shillings. I'm glad I had only a small fortune. <coughs> aya, aya, slaves for sale, slaves for sale. Well, did you see the signs? Alas, no. The pyramids were closed today. When my bid for this fresh beauty. Help! I've been kidnapped! <laughs> <laughs> and the Nile? They were charging to see it. One thousand drachmas! Help! How much is that? It's about eleven pence. You cheap state! I'm worth more than that! Ah, uh, recession. Oh, look! It's Mademoiselle Amanda! Impossible. Yoo-hoo! Mademoiselle Amanda! I have one thousand drachmas going once. Phileas, it is I! Amanda, what on earth are you doing up there? Going twice! No time to explain! Bid something! And dress so, so disgracefully. Uh, ten pounds. Ah, we have a new bid. A gentleman. Oh, it! I've got it! <gasps> it's it catching, sir! I have ten pounds going once! Is that all I'm worth to you? No one knows a bargain better than you, my sweet. Going twice! One hundred pounds! <gasps> what are you doing? We haven't got a hundred pounds! I know that. If Mr. Falk doesn't, we'll keep upping the bid until he doesn't have the price of the ticket. Then, when the warrant arrives from England, we'll arrest him. I have 100 pounds going once. 200. 1,000. <gasps> now we're getting somewhere. 2,000. <gasps> 10,000. Casper, too, if this keeps up, I'll be outbid. And the unfortunate Amanda will be lost to that unsavory sheep. 11,000. I have a plan. But what if you bid more than he has? Yes. I know exactly how much he stole from the bank. One day, father. Do you take checks? No checks, no credits. Very well, 21,000. <gasps> She's not worth it. Believe me, I know her. What are you doing here? You. Go away. Yes, monsieur. <clears throat> 30,000. Julius, can you afford me? I have often wondered, my dear. I have 30,000 going once. 40,000. Imbray, don't bid against me. Sorry, sir, I got carried away. Do not worry, monsieur. The gentleman's purse. Clasper, too. Your salary has just been raised. I have 40,000 going once. Too rich for me. Phileas! What? What's happening? Going twice. Phileas, if that man buys me, I'll never speak to you again. So sorry, Amanda. 
Uh, we've got to do something. Fifty thousand? You may not bid against yourself, Sheik. And if the gentleman is no longer interested, the woman is yours for forty thousand pounds. But I, we don't have it. What? <gasps> by the sacred breath of Allah, that is an offense punishable by dismemberment. Out with their tongues! Laugh <laughs> they even! Now, sir, will you reconsider your former bid? Certainly. Ten pounds? Ah, uh, well, the nose of Allah smiles in his day. Take her. Phileas, my hero! You won't send me back, will you? Certainly not. A man of honor never sends back his purchases. Purchases? Is that all I mean to you? No, what you mean to me is an unconscionable delay in my schedule. We must hurry. Next is lot number two. And there's lot number two. More flesh, more muscle. What? Will you pinch me? Ah, oh, what am I bid for this fresh? Agnes, I forgot all about her. Won't somebody please? Uh, Phileas, do be a dear and buy her for me. I beg you, anybody. Very uh, well, uh, ten pounds. So? No, you must pay me. What? But that is unheard of. Ah, uh, ah, uh, here, here. Uh, take your money. Thank you. Well, let us be off. But what about all my things? That horrid man. We haven't any time. Pity. But what will I wear? I rather think the veil suits you, dearest. I won't budge without my wardrobe. You can't make me. Oh, yes, I can. I own you, remember? <laughs> This way, Sahib. How much further to Singapore? Hmm, less than far, but more than near. Can't you be more precise? Sahib wish to know when we arrive, Singapore? Yes, I have a ship to catch. Arrive precisely when get there. Not a moment later. Guarantee. I find this Eastern philosophy quite refreshing. How about you, Phileas? If I had wanted a philosopher, I would have hired one. This man represented himself as a god. Most excellent guide, Sahib. At any rate, the only one available. How excellent remains to be seen. Lead on, Macduff. Nay, not Macduff. Main, Cocoa. Please, to continue on in very same direction. Well, humble guide. It attends to humbler porter. Come, Amanda, we'll show this man how we English break trail. Just don't break your neck, Phileas. You look tired, Mr. Pastor, too. It is not fatigue, merely fear of wild beasts. You don't have to fear. I'll protect you. Perhaps I should prefer the wild beasts. It's walking, Bob. Oh, what is, sir? Oh. My plan. Oh. Disguising ourselves as native guides. Mr. Phileas Fogg is in my grasp at last. I shall guide him round and round this jungle until the ship has long sail. Then, when the world arrives me, I shall have my man. Hey, why do you say so myself? I see, sir. Get him good and lost in the jungle. Very clever, sir. Very clever. Thank you, Bobbins. 
Uh, just one thing, sir. What's that? Uh, well, if, if Mr. Fogg gets good enough in the jungle, then us being with him and all, won't we be good enough too? You, no. The reason you will never amount to anything, Bobbins, is that you don't trust your superiors to do your thinking for you. Ah, no, sir. I, I mean, yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. I think. any time. No time, no time. Honestly, Phileas, if it were up to you, we'd have no time to breathe. Breathing does not delay. Stopping does, and so does prattling. Prattling? Me? This is not mere prattle, dear Phileas. This is out and out protest. And did it ever occur to that TikTok brain of yours that we might make better time when refreshed? You then. Zagi! The struggle looks familiar. Are you sure we haven't passed this way before? No, Sahib. As Krishna say, the seen one jungle, seen them all. I'll never be so glad as to see the last of this one. That's because you don't really see it at all. I think it's beautiful. You look at the vegetation and all you see is nuisance. It's to trip you vines to hold you back, I look and I see a garden, unspoiled by man and machine, luxuriant, sensuous, yes, and timeless. And suffocating and backward and totally barbarian. I ask you, how can a society survive when irresponsible nations, such as this one, publish railroad timetables for railroads that have not yet been built? Perhaps they're being optimistic, like you. Amanda, I am not an optimist. I'm a realist. And I am a romantic. And also my chattel, being bought for the princely sum of 10 pounds. Shall we continue? Shall <clears throat> we back, one way or another? This seems like your master and my mistress are having a bit of a tiff. Monsieur Fogg never loses control. Pity. <laughs> Miss Amanda is quite right. Are you coming? Shh. Did you hear something? Like throbbing? Only my heart, dearie, whenever you are near. Master! Wait for me! Oh, you there, Magumbo! I insist we've been in this jungle before. Perhaps. <laughs> Not ten minutes ago. I assure you, the jungle is the jungle. Look! My head! I must have dropped it. How careless when there are no gentlemen about. Look here, Machu. I'm not a man of violence, but unless you give me a satisfactory explanation, your next incarnation may be sooner than expected. <laughs> Most humbly, sorry, Sahi. A, a, a terrible mistake. Severe punishment is most necessary to make amends. I beg of you, please, uh, be my servant. <coughs> what? Me? Your servant? It, it is the custom of, of my country for the, the lowborn, wretched, untouchable serving class to make the blows for their better. What a remarkable idea. I knew I liked this country. Now, Miss Amanda, Unfortunately, a good thrashing, regardless of who may deserve one, will not undo the insufferable delay you have caused me. Perhaps I even like it but Money will do no good here. Phileas, what a sacrilegious thing for you to say. May I have Sahib's permission to suggest we make What? With 20,000 pounds at stake? Yes, huh. It is impossible to travel at night. We'll make torches. We'll go through the clearings and we'll pass. Also, the wild animals come out at night. He has a point, monsieur. Please. 
Please, Phileas. We're all dreadfully tired. Ah. Well, ah. well, I can't leave women unprotected. There are times when being civilized is a decided disadvantage. Passport two. We are making camp. Now, over there in the clearing, build a fire for us. Yes, monsieur. A big fire. Agnes, you help with the tea. Yes, miss. Mm -hmm. Come along, dearie. Isn't the money? It's the principle, my reputation, my dignity. That matters a lot to you, doesn't it? It's everything. When a man loses honor and his self-respect, he loses what? I wouldn't expect a woman to understand. I understand. You'd sooner lose me than this race. No, of course not. I knew you wouldn't understand. Leave me behind then. I wouldn't mind so very much. I'd rather take in a liking to this place. You see, Phileas, losing isn't the worst thing. Not if you know how. I really wouldn't mind losing those noxious London streets, nor my blabbering cousins and blubbering nieces, nor my corsets and bustles and petticoats. This place gives me the oddest sensation, like I've been here before. You have? Twice? No, this is different. Nature is so overwhelming here. Not something to prune in our neat gardens, but a force, a very assuring force. Phileas, let's stay here, you and I, like Adam and Eve. Most people must think you're out of your mind, Amanda, but I know better. You haven't a mind to be out of, uh, really. What do you have for brains, cheese? <laughs> Calm down, my man. I'm sure Agnes's intentions are honorable. Behind the bushes! Agnes, really? No, it, w it was a, a face! A man! A man with a face! What's so odd about that? A painted face! A horrible painted face! With a spear! A face with a spear? No, the man. <laughs> and hardly any clothes. Well. <laughs> he looked like a cannibal. Where's Mick, what's his name? I fear this guy. Gone, monsieur. Gone? And the porter? Gone too. Oh, well, get a hold of yourself. I'm sure it's just your imagination. Monsieur? Well, what is it? My imagination. Oh, I hope this won't last. Phileas, do something! Now, see here, good woman. I am a loyal subject of Her Majesty Victoria, and I can assure you she'd be mightily displeased with any harm to come to us, so. Uh, Phileas! You have such a way with words. Perhaps they don't speak English. Passport you. Try reasoning with them in French. What shall I say? Anything. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Como telle vous? <laughs> what do you want? Perhaps you're hungry. Maybe we should ask them for dinner. Oh, just forget I said anything. Mother on bug gum baba. Bugu gugu gug. Amanda, really, this is no time for facetiousness. Gug 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 baba. Mug, it's a southern dialect. You mean you understand this gibberish? Of course. What do you think English girls learn at school while you men are out playing cricket? I never thought about it. What does she say? She wants to know if you're a missionary. Well, I should say no. I told her so. She replied she was glad. They're tired of missionary. Tell her I'll offer her 1,000 pounds sterling if she'll lead us out of this infertile jungle. Bugug, ma bamboo. <laughs> well, there's your answer. Very well, make it 2,000. Phileas, they have no use for your money. But I haven't any beads. One of your watches. Never. But you have three. The minimum, I assure you. What else do we have? Don't look at me. I, I'm too tough. I'd give him a bellyache for sure. And I would only be the hors d'oeuvres. All I've left me is this fake jewel from that slave trader. I'm sure it's <gasps> worthless. Gum, 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 gum,
Ugga bugga, um, ugga, ugga. Goodness, here, take it if you like it so much. Mamu, goobum, goom. 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 Queen. It means queen. Amanda, pray tell us what in bloody blazes is going on here. It seems legend has it, whoever returns a sacred gemstone should be proclaimed almighty king, or queen, as the situation has it. You mean to tell me that that is the sacred gemstone, and that you, you are proclaimed the almighty? Nice work if you can get it. Just the sort of career I was intended for. Well, that's marvelous. Command them to lead us out of this infernal jungle. <laughs> You must bow first. What? You must bow to a queen. Then perhaps she will entertain your request. I will do no such thing. I'm an Englishman. Well, I'm giving you special treatment. Everyone else is on their stomachs. Amanda, I've never struck a woman before, but my stoic resolve is crumbling. I... Oh. <laughs> Root! Please. Better. Phileas, I'll let you be my king. We'll rule together. Rule what? This overgrown morass of weeds? <laughs> I feel sorry for you, Phileas. You can't see beauty. Not when it assaults me. You'd rather be a tiny cog in the great clockworks that is England than to live here with me, with the world at your feet. I'd sooner be eaten by these heathens. Well, suit yourself. Gagu gagu mom. Amanda! I'm so Hi, sorry, guys. Phileas. Gug! <laughs> Just teasing, Phileas. But you were afraid. Never. Oh, not to die. An Englishman is never afraid to die, no matter how silly the reason. You are afraid to live. You are afraid to live without the rules and the clocks and the schedules that define you. You are afraid to find the man you might be by yourself. Amanda, you've gone far enough. I know. I only wish you'd know it too. Mamba boo, gugu, Singapore, gug. What are you telling her? Take us to Singapore, right now before I changed my mind. That's what you want, isn't it? Yes, but... Thank you, Amanda. On one condition, that you grant me my freedom. Do you mean from all that slave business? I was only joking. Grant it! You are free, Amanda. Thank you, Phileas. How many days have you left? Thirty-nine. Then why are you dawdling? To Singapore! Go! <laughs> Parcel post? Oh. Gin and tonic. With a line break. Something for your friend? 
Scotch and vinegar, sir, with ice. Extradition to one and kill. Extradition, right here. Good. And you mean a second helping? Purchase some native dress. Oh, if, you know, uh, if boots and, and hats and such. Down the block, but they don't have dress. Come along, Robbins. Nice chats, these Americans. But slow, dreadfully slow. How long will the train stop over here in Denver? Oh, uh, long enough to wet your whistles. Mm. Plenty of time for me to buy you and your friends here a drink. Oh, thank you, Sam, but please allow me the honor. You know, meeting you has been a distinct pleasure. Mutual. Don't be a reporter and all. I'd take more than passing interest in any man traveling around the world. What do you have, ma'am? Tea, if you please. Now, remember, we're in America. How can I forget? It seems America is the only country in the world that makes its presence constantly felt. Is it also so uncivilized as to lack tea? Well, what we had, we dumped in Boston Harbor. Left a bad taste, and you being English and all, one revolution's plenty, don't you think? But I reckon they have some coffee I'm born in the back room. Passepartout, why don't you see to the ladies' comfort? Does Monsieur include Mademoiselle Agnes? Yes. I'm afraid Amanda does not appreciate your sense of humor, Sam. Oh, well, it grows on you, like saddle blisters. Barkeep, two whiskeys. Here's the dog. Cheerio. Oh, 
I beg your pardon. Dog tootin' you do. <coughs> Say, how come I never seen you here before? You must be a stranger. You voting for me, mister? No, sorry. Why not? Well, I'm afraid I'm not eligible to vote in your country. And a bird up to boot. That's okay. You can vote for me anyhow. You want to be my friend, don't you? Hmm. Now, to celebrate my victory, drinks all the Mighty generous of you, Barkey. Flex, Bob. You know, checking the time every 90 seconds will make the train depart any sooner than it's gonna. No, you're right. I don't know why. I suppose it makes me feel better. Let me see that. Well, it's a view. Is something the matter? This is 9 o'clock. It's Greenwich Mean Time. I haven't reset it since I left London. Well, ain't that a mite confusing? Never been right? Not at all. And it was once correct when we crossed the international daylight. You see, this year represents the time I'm racing against. Well, you see, before I turned the newspaper business, I was a riverboat pilot myself. What I learned from the river was, it's gonna get you there in its own good time. Might as well bait a hook and see what bites along the way. Now, Sam, that's where we disagree. I believe it's mankind's destiny to become nature's master, to go farther and faster, even to the moon, as Mr. Vernon speculated. <laughs> that crazy Frenchman? I tell you, if anybody's gonna do it, it's gonna be an American. It's you! Of course it is I. Who else would I be? Well, he admits it. I cannot deny that I am indeed me. Although at times, when Mademoiselle Agnes has that look about her, I just it, don't... It's don't, the dirty little coward who shot the shirt. Monsieur, you're mistaken. Coward, yes. But dirty? I assure you I... Shot? Sheriff? What? I'm sure I've never even met the gentleman. What was his name? Wyatt. <coughs> No, it was Wild Bill. I'm afraid you are mistaken, sir, in your identification. You see, this here is my faithful and trusted valet. And you're in code. Well, that's funny. I thought we were in Kansas. Get a rope. When was this sheriff of yours killed? Last week. Tuesday. Then it's impossible. Last Tuesday, we were on a ship crossing the Pacific Ocean, so... That proves it. If he wasn't guilty, he wouldn't need an alibi. Yeah. yeah. That's illogical. Well, that's America. Look here, I can vouch for these folks. And you must be an accomplice. Nope, I'm a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> well then, nobody's going to take your word for anything. Look here. I say he did it. I say I saw this lewd out, miserable, half breed, shoot the sheriff. No. Does anybody here doubt my word? No. Well then, string him up. Yeah. I say, Inspector Bart, don't you think we're going a bit far? It's Mr. Fogg who has gone too far. But once I am sheriff of Denver, he will go no further than I, Inspector Fix of Scotland Yard, and 
Sure. Again, sir. Shall have my man. First, I must become popular. Ah, see! Stream! But it'll cost you. Money's no object. You might miss your train, maybe lose your bet. Go on. Barkeep, do you have a gun? The jackass have a gun? Buy right in the ceiling, won't you? Oh, oh. Now hold on, hold on. Now, there's this one minor point I'd like to clear up. Sort of a legal technicality. Huh? Huh? What? Huh? Well, Mr. Bark. No one here is doubting your word as a gentleman of honor. But there's something you've overlooked. What's that? You can't arrest this man for anything. He ain't been elected sheriff yet. That's right. You want everything to be legal, don't you? All right. Everybody who's for me, raise your hand! Hold it, hold it. Now, we got to do this thing proper. By the book. Otherwise, people might start asking questions later on. Now, first off, you can't run your own election. Marky, would you do the honors? Glad to. What do I do? Well, of course, if it was me, I'd ask for nominations. Right. Are there any nominations? Yeah, me. Now, there you go again, Bart. You can't nominate yourself. Nominate me. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have the very rare and distinct privilege of placing before you. Cut it, you simpleton. Bart. Time to vote. I nominate Mr. Fogg. Me? What? I second the nomination. Well, I ain't afraid of losing a note. Patty waste. Get on with it. Well, not so fast. We gotta give time for the candidates to make a little speech. Yeah. How else are we gonna make an informed choice? You first, Bart. <coughs> the speech? Well, folks, you don't know me. You don't know what kind of sheriff I ought to be. You don't know how much I want to win or how much I'd hate. Democracy in action. Your turn, Bob. Sam? I think like an American, Bob. Friends, a vote for me is a, a vote against oh, injustice and know. fear and knowledge. Yes. A vote for me is a vote for decency. Yes, it's so true. Yes, it's so true. A vote for me is $100 in your pocket. <laughs> official act, I ordered that man to be released. I'm sorry. 
Passepartout, please be so kind as to keep my campaign promise. Yes, monsieur. a weapon. Barkey, give him your gun. Even if I were to have a weapon, I wouldn't deign to quarrel with the likes of you. Oh no! We'll see about that. Is this here your lady friend? Honey, how do you like to be kissed? My real man! You wouldn't dare! Me. Who's gonna stop me? Barky, be so kind as to loan me a revolver and a single bullet. No, Billy, if you'll be killed! Your honor is more important than my life. Damn my honor, don't be stupid! Listen to the lady, Bob, she's making a heap of sense. There's also my honor to be considered. I'm ready, Mr. Bart. Sir, that I am subject to the code of British honor and not that of the American West. Now be so good as to leave before I forget my heritage. Mr. Bob, you shame me. to deputize whomever I choose. I designate you. Please be so good as to keep the peace until I return. Sir, sir, uh, thank you for all of your help. It'll make it yarn if I write that book. You know, Sam, I don't believe you ever told me your last name. Clements. Samuel Langhorn Clements. Well, I've been thinking of changing it to something that'll fit on a book cover. Good luck, Mr. Falk. I hope you win. Mark my word, I will win. Now to catch that train, passport two. Train. Train. Yeah. Sam Train. Yeah. Just misses the mark. Win what? Oh, sort of contest. Kind of like a race. It's a long story. You talk, I'll pour. Well, it reminds me of the time I was down in Calaveras County. There was this man with a jumping problem. And I could go around town, sticking some food in his mouth and chewing it up. Sitting it back out when he did. Ahoy there, aboard the Henrietta. Ten days left, Passepartout. This is our last jet. You then. I would like to speak to the captain of this, um, sturdy vessel. Yes. She's a rust bucket, but she floats, and I be your captain. State your business. I admire a person who comes directly to the point. I wish to book passage to England. <laughs> har, har. In the first place, this here ain't no luxury liner. In the second place, She's bound for South America to load a cargo of coffee beans. 
And in the third place, I do as I please. But last and not least, this is the only seaworthy ship in the port of New York. The SS Atlantic sailed yesterday. And the Great Western sails in three days' time. But that's too late. You say you're a person who does as he pleases. Well, I'm a man who gets what he wants, and I wish to charter your vessel. Will $2,000 please you? Well, no. I have no time to bargain. How is 3000 Cash. Passport two. Done. We sail with the tide. And a bonus of $1,000 if we reach Plymouth in 10 days' time. We sail at once. I feel it in my back. Eggs, you can't expect me to arrive home in these rags. No, but an entire new wardrobe? Well, I must have something to show for our trip. Ladies, the captain has graciously put a start ship at our disposal. Like I said, she ain't no luxury liner, but the ladies can bunk in my cabin. Thank you, Captain. How refreshing to know that chivalry has not died in my absence. Raise the gangplank. Now, if you ladies follow me. Wait! Hold that boot! We made it! Oh, I didn't think I could run so fast. I didn't think I could jump so far. But I saw nothing but water underneath me. I remembered. I can't swim. You gentlemen nearly missed the boat. I hope you realize she's headed for England. England? But where did you say South America? England is precisely where we are bound. I am Phileas Fogg, my valet passport too. And you are both Londoners, if my ear is still attuned. Yeah. <clears throat> Phipps is the name. And this is my associate, Mr. Bobbins. You are both in some hurry to return. No sooner than you, I am sure. Well, this ship is under my charter, but you can feel free to make passage. Thank you. Allow me to pay our fare. Tut, tut, I wouldn't hear of it. There's no favor too large for a fellow Englishman. <clears throat> and now, what are you looking at? Pardon me, monsieur, but do either of you have any distant relatives scattered around the globe? Passport two, don't be nosy. Come, let us find a garden. Uh, you gentlemen are free to do likewise. Why England? Unless... Unless he thinks the police have lost his trail. Mr. Fogg is too shrewd for that. When I heard this ship was headed for South America, I was sure he was ready to make a break for it. But maybe he suspects us. Yes. We'll have to watch him very closely. But the minute he's on British soil, we'll arrest him. Well, well I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I think I'll be sorry. Uh, Mr. Fogg is a fine gentleman, kind, generous. I, I've really grown quite fond of him. Yes, so am I. But we mustn't let sentiment interfere with duty. For England! Nine days remain, Passport Two. Let us hope that the good weather keeps. Captain. Mr. Fogg? How is our progress? 
Full speed ahead. Very good. Eight days to England. It hardly seems possible to come so far and end right where one started. I know what you mean. Mr. Passepartout seems to avoid me as much as he ever did. We must do something about that, Mr. Fix. Ladies. Still on course. What do you take me for? A blubber and landlubber? Of course we are. Still bound for England, then? Unless it's been moved. How's your Mr. Bobbins? Lowly, I'm afraid. The sea in his stomach do not agree. Get him on deck. The fresh air does wonders. Well, thank you. I shall. Good day. Seven days, Amanda. Time enough, Phileas. In seven days, God created the world. And look what wonders he achieved. Yes. Why, Phileas. I shall blush. Like sunrise over the Indian Sea. The color suits you. Six days, Mr. Fogg. Six days, Mr. Fix. <clears throat> Six days? <laughs> the weather is taking a turn for the worse. Yes, I hope it won't delay us. So do I, Mr. Fogg. So do I. I've been waiting for this homecoming for a very long time. You have pressing business that takes you back to England, I presume? In a manner of speaking, business which I am very anxious to see concluded. Well, good luck to you. The captain assures me he is making all haste. And you too, Mr. Fogg. What's that? Well, luck, Mr. Fogg. May the best man win. Thank you, Mr. Fix. desire? The sea is so beautiful, even at its most savage. Do you wish we'd stayed in the wilderness? That was a dream. 
We must awake from the sweetest of dreams, mustn't we? No, my heart's desire is not a place. Tell me, was the world as small as you'd expect it? It's not the world that is either large or small, but men's ambition. I find that winning the love of a lady may be far more challenging than winning a race against time. Often, that is the same thing, but you'll never know until you try. I suppose not. Are you trying, Phileas? I haven't been, have I? I hope not. The sea is beautiful. I, I never noticed. to my name, I can't ask Amanda to marry me. What? Marry me. Oh, Monsieur is not feeling well. Is it a fever? Come, I risk my life. We go below. Only I hope that you have it not touchy. Good it is to breathe at all, miss. Ah, ladies. I trust you are not indisposed by the storm. Not at all, Mr. Fix. And how is your friend, Mr. Bobbins? Not well. When he was last coherent, he muttered something about extreme unction. Oh, fair to England. Hey, Mr. Fogg? Yes, let us hope so. Wait, do you hear something? Why, no. Nothing at all. I'm sorry, Mr. Fogg. I thought we could make it, even running at full speed. But I'm afraid that storm really did us in. And we have lost. Oh, Phileas, I'm so sorry. Rough luck, old man. Give me a paddle, Mr. Fogg. I'll roll for you. No, no, we have not lost. Not when we have an hour, nay a minute left. Casper, too. How much money remains? Phileas, this is one situation you cannot buy yourself out of. Barely a thousand pounds, monsieur. Five thousand dollars. Captain, I would like to purchase your vessel. What? Is five thousand sufficient? I'd offer more, but it's all I have. Well... Let me suggest that it's of little value bobbing helplessly in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. She's yours, Mr. Fogg. Thank you, Captain. And you may have her back with my compliments when we are finished with her. Finished with her? Well, the superstructure. It's made of wood, is it not? And the furniture. Why, there's our fuel, Captain. Everyone, lend a hand. We shall dismantle the Henrietta and feed her to her own boilers. All we need is a hull to reach England. Fantastique! Jolly good show, Fogg. Captain, would you be so good as to man the helm? Bless me if I've ever seen the like. Aye, aye, Mr. Fogg. I thought 
thought we might add thieves to the bonfire. But Amanda, all of your worldly possessions, I cannot accept. Easy come, easy go. Besides, there's really only one thing in the world I care to possess. Thank you, Amanda. I'll make it up to you. You'd better. Monsieur. There is nothing left to burn. Not even any money. But is it enough? When? Oh, it's Plymouth! Yes, it is enough. Now, today is our last day. If the trains are still running, we shall be in London by tonight. And then, dearest Amanda, there is something I shall ask you. Captain, are we then in English waters? What, Phileas? Why, yes, Mr. Fitz. Then, by the authority vested in me by Her Britannic Majesty Queen Victoria, I hereby arrest you, Phileas Fogg, for the theft of 55,000 pounds sterling from the Bank of England. I've ever seen a sadder day. The lamp in my room is still burning. I must go extinguish it. Just blow out the flames, dearie. Let us breathe in the fumes. Now we must conserve every penny. I have a little saved by. You're welcome to it. Monsieur Fogg would never accept charity. If there's anything I can do, Miss, Mr. Fogg. Uh, 
I'm dreadfully sorry, Mr. Fogg. It, it was a terrible mistake. How was I supposed to know they'd caught him the thief in my absence? I, I had a good look at him down at the yard, and it was an amazing similarity. Truly amazing. Inspector Fix, as I now know you to be, stripped of your various guises, your blundering stupidity has cost me a wager of 20,000 pounds, in pursuit of which I have spent every farthing to my good name, which I also came very near to losing, having spent the night in a prison cell. For all of that I may forgive you, but not for the impudence of you referring to yourself as a gentleman. A gentleman would have simply asked if I were a thief, and as a gentleman, my word would have been accepted. You are no gentleman, Inspector Fix. You are a fool. Please leave. Uh, Mr. Fall, might I be going too, Mr. Fall? Uh, my wife, Bess, she's been expecting me home some some three months ago. That, that is, if she's still my wife. Agnes, you and Pastor Two may take some tea. Shall I go also? Your clock's about wound out. Shall I set them for you? What time is it? Will you marry me? What? Oh, thank goodness, he's alive. But it's indecent for a lady to ask a gentleman to marry. Then ask me. I can't. I have no fortune. I don't care. People will think I married you for your money. I don't care. Your reputation might be ruined. I don't care. Neither do I. Amanda, darling, will you marry me? On one condition. Which is? That there be no conditions. Granted. Then yes. Pastor Two, come quickly. Yes, sir. Are you feeling well? Yes, never better. Now, congratulations. Congratulations. Now, quickly, find a minister. Sacre bleu! Is someone dying? No, no. We're getting married. Amanda and I. Magnifique! Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Now, quickly, find a minister. Any kind will do. What's tomorrow? It's Monday, right? Well, what are you waiting for? And Agnes, buy for me a modest white gown. Something with lace and a ten-foot train. Phileas, what are you doing? I'll never need to know what time it is again, Amanda. From this moment on, I, I have only time for you. If you ever ask me what time it is, I, I shall say our time. What time is it? It is now and always now. That is all the time I want. Time enough to say I love you. And that is time enough for, for any man. You showed me this, Amanda. Strange that I should travel around the world to find what was right here all along. Monsieur, Monsieur, well, you cannot be married tomorrow on Monday. Why on earth not? Because tomorrow it is Sunday. Today is Sunday. Uh, no, today is Saturday. Look. You must have yesterday's paper. No, all the papers are like this. Look, Saturday, in the Times. Then the Times is an error. How could I be mistaken? You think I don't know what day it is? I kept a meticulous record of our journey, hour by hour. How could I have lost, or rather gained what? Oh, my word. Phileas, what is it? The International Date Line. What does that have anything to do with it? I've called that line many a time. No one beats Passport 2. Right. Anyway, we've been traveling eastward against the sun. Each day we gained up, although we saw the sun rise and set 80 times. Here in London, it's only been 79. We gained an entire day. What does that mean? It means today is Saturday. It means we won. Oh. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Philby. Good afternoon, Pascal, too. Well, Bog, punctual as always, I see. Well, Philby, was there ever any doubt? <laughs> I suppose not. Here's my check for 20,000 pounds. Ah, yes, that was the amount, wasn't it? Just turn it to my good man over there. <laughs> Mr. Paul, sir, did you see what's in the paper? Inspector Fix, my good friend. The news. Yes. The news. Oh, and Mr. Bobbins. Welcome, everyone. Uh, but the news. The news is that Amanda and I are to be married. And you're all to come. There shall be a celebration as London has never seen. And then. And then. There's a matter of a honeymoon. Philby, would you like a chance to win back your money? <laughs> ¶¶ 